All right, let's begin. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Paul Cotter. I'm executive director of the Canadian Open Data Society, uh, also known as uh, Communauté Canadienne de Donnie Ouverts. Uh, we started uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, launched uh, then and have had monthly webinars ever since, along with an awareness campaign on social media. Uh, some advocacy activities, and uh, most importantly, our uh, hopefully uh, once again annual summit uh, last September uh, hosted by Montreal and Quebec, which was a resounding success and uh, sessions from which are all available on YouTube. Today, uh, I am pleased to introduce uh, Mel Char and Jean-Philippe Valois of uh, MyTax, uh, a federally uh, funded nonprofit. Uh, I will let them describe their mission. I'm sure they can do it so much better than uh, we can. But the exciting thing about this, they fund uh, not only small and medium-sized enterprises, but uh, nonprofits and municipalities. And uh, they're increasingly aware of the opportunities lying in open data. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, we can work together. Now we have a standard disclaimer on all our webinars. Uh, always seek professional advice before making any life-changing decisions. That's the upshot. <laughs> Of, uh, of, uh, of that disclaimer. I'm sure you're in good hands uh, with these folks though, so I'll just skim over that uh, and introduce uh, the society. Uh, this will be reproduced in French in a moment. Uh, we have a vision, a mission, and a value proposition. Uh, we're all about empowering uh, members and individuals in general to uh, publish and to use and to gain insights from open data, uh, whether it's in the public sector, uh, the nonprofit sector, or the private sector. And we are increasingly developing a community of practice in that respect where experts can uh, talk to uh, new uh, joiners uh, and, uh, and exchange uh, questions and uh, concerns. So uh, here is the same thing in French. I'll go on to say, uh, while, while this might be read, that um, we are currently putting a lot of the proceeds of the last summit, which had 600 attendees, 110 speakers, 55 sessions, roughly, uh, into a knowledge base that we hope will be ready by spring. And uh, we are also putting together a Slack channel, which we hope will be moderately uh, active, uh, not overwhelming, but also uh, quite useful. And uh, we are in alpha testing on a jobs board for folks who are into open data or data analysis in general. And with that, I will turn over the screen share to uh, our guest today. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Paul. Let me just... Uh... Thank you, Paul pull up the presentation here. Are you, let me just go full screen, hopefully. Yes. Seeing my screen all good? Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Paul, for the invite. Um, my name is Jean-Philippe Valois. I'm here with my colleague, Mel. And we're uh, very excited with the opportunity to, to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do, what we do and to see how maybe we can uh, work together with your, uh, your members in, in the future. Uh, I'm an account manager for specifically for municipalities at MyTax. And uh, my colleague Mel and I, we work pretty much all across Canada to, to reach out to all kinds of organizations and explain basically what we, what we do and pr pretty much say what we're about to say today. So um, in a nutshell, just maybe a little bit before I, I, I start going, I had, uh, we had, we had the sort of arranged this presentation to be bilingual. So my objective, our objective was to sort of speak French over English slides and then maybe speak English over French slides. But seeing that most of the audience today is, uh, I believe is Anglophone, I think we're gonna maybe do the whole thing in English and uh, make the whole content, of course, available after the presentation for anybody who would want it. And certainly for any, any Francophones listening to this afterwards, we're very happy, of course, to, to have a separate conversation and feel free to, of course, call us in person anytime et on pourra se parler en français et vous expliquer comment fonctionnent les programmes à ce, à ce moment-là. So I guess if that, does that work with you, Paul? I guess that's a, maybe a good way of working for now. 
All right, so a little bit about my task. We, uh, so we've got roughly three, um, three parts of this presentation, a little bit of background about who we are, what we do, then a few specifics about what the programs are and how really the, these things really work and the kind of money that you can get from the organization and the dynamic behind doing a MyTax project, and then a whole bunch of examples at the end. So uh, hopefully, since we're such a small group today, I don't know, you, we usually, I, I usually take questions during the presentation, but this being maybe a little bit more uh, formal, let, let, let's maybe do the whole thing, and then maybe we can take questions at the end. And uh, if, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll have a bit of time, maybe we can talk about the kinds of challenges that you think you might have in your organization, and then we can sort of try and figure out whether or not that's, that's something we can work with. I really wouldn't be surprised if it were. There's a, a lot that, that can be funded by, uh, that, you know, that we can support. So, so in a nutshell, um, why do we exist? Is, you know, because we believe that innovation is, is key to, to, boosting, to boosting Canada, to making us more productive. And we, we believe that um, doing this can bring you know, social and economic benefits to, uh, to our organizations. We, um, we, the way we like to work is starting with the challenges that the organizations are having. And then, you know, seeing how we can maybe connect you with universities by promoting the fact that you could be getting a chance to work with universities with, you know, benefiting from human capital that, you know, we, we find in, uh, in those organizations, but very much so based on collaborative innovation. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit of what, what we mean by that in just a few seconds. And ultimately, boosting entrepreneurship, you know, economic development, productivity, and of course, innovation across Canada. The, um, so my role in municipalities is a little bit new at MyTax. Actually, I've only been in, in this role for, for a month and a half, and uh, still a little bit new to me, but I am very excited with the opportunity to, 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 to be working with municipalities, which is something a little bit new at MyTax. We couldn't do this in the past. And uh, Ultimately, you know, we, uh, we've got a, a, a mandate to make all this funding and these programs and our connections available to municipalities to try and understand first and foremost what the challenges might be you know, for large and small municipalities, be it developing uh, economic uh, you know, development uh, guidelines or becoming a smart city, uh, looking into environmental issues, transportation, uh, infrastructure. And as far as, as, as we're chatting today, uh, developing uh, data governance and you know, social issues such as housing is very broad. So we can, we can help all kinds of organizations tackle, tackle those needs. And, and that goes for any organization. It can be a nonprofit a municipality or a, of course, a for-profit company. Um, and we're, we're, we're aware that you know, there are all kinds of reasons why it's hard to innovate for specifically here for municipalities, but uh, you know, some of the big ones being access to data. And I'm, I'm sure that you know, being a, a open data society members, you're all familiar with uh, what, what this means, but you know, as well as access to information. And, and what we see, of course, a lot is uh, just limited time, limited budget, limited time. The fact that sometimes resources are, aren't available internally. And in many cases, the whole idea of innovating might be a little bit new to municipalities and, and to a lot of smaller SMEs uh, all across the country. So that's the kind of thing that uh, we can assist with. And again, in my role, specifically municipalities, I'm very excited to be getting this opportunity as a, as a citizen, well aware that we ultimately as citizens are the ultimate recipients. Micro background is that my tax in the past was very much based on working with private companies and universities and trying to drive innovation in Canada through partnerships between those two organizations. The opening of the programs to municipalities came about during the, the, the pandemic. You know, a lot of organizations, including municipalities, were struggling with uh, questions that nobody had expected. And uh, we had a special mandate to open the programs to municipalities and hospitals. And it, the program being successful, we've decided to, to, to leave it open. So it's, it's a permanent mandate for the future, whereby uh, nonprofits, for-profit companies, municipalities and hospitals are admissible to the program. We reached out to municipalities a year and a half ago. There are a lot of projects. Those were the 60, 60 projects first came in, but now I think we're all the way up to 150 projects with municipalities all across Canada. So we're super excited that we can, we can move forward here. So the, the, you know, the, ultimately what we do is we help organizations 
you know, solve their more, more pressing challenges, the most pressing complex challenges uh, by benefiting from the talent that we have in our post-secondary uh, institutions and transforming those challenges into, uh, into ideas. Um, I was just roughly saying that we've uh, we've done a lot of this. We've been around since about year 2000, and um, we've done a lot of projects, up to 47 research projects with essentially many, many organizations across Canada. The focus is Canadian, although we do have possibilities to work with uh, international organizations as well, and we'll, we'll get into that in just a few minutes, but uh, we've, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty good at this. I'd say and probably in Canada, we are probably one of the, you know, like main central organizations that can help um, companies, municipalities work with universities. So it's it's not just the funding, it's, it, it's funding, but it's connections, a lot of things. We have four main offices, Vancouver, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal. So, so we got the experience and we have tools to, to help organizations sort of uh, do a little bit more of that, get onto the innovation uh, road. Uh, we, uh, we can find the right people for you and give you access to our uh, national network. And of course, we provide the financial support. So um, it's, um, I, I think I'm just going to skip through this a little bit fast, but uh, we, uh, we try to work with organizations. It's not just about, you know, providing funding and making a connection with the university. We try to work and sit down with you and we will be sharing a lot of information after this workshop, including uh, the links to the, the forms that you need to fill to get access to the programs. But certainly we do feel that you pretty much in all cases, we, we need to help you with this stuff because uh, you quickly find out that there are a lot of, uh, a lot of strings to pull, a lot of, uh, sorry, that might not be the right expression, a lot of, uh, a lot of little things that need to be looked into and, and we're there to assist. And you'll find that a lot of the time it's uh, help that organizations do need. So uh, th these programs are an opportunity to, you know, to, to connect with universities, to meet with potential candidates that you're going to be working for. And um, to, uh, in many cases, including municipalities, where we find that experimental projects or pilot projects are very much the key to the success, is certainly the kind of, uh, of project that can be conducted with uh, my tax funding. So um, roughly speaking, we can, fund, we can fund just about anything, as long as it's called innovation, optimization of uh, products and processes, or for maybe you know, SMEs developing new products, uh, or you know, getting access to data, getting access to uh, analysis, and of course, exploring new technologies and new solutions are the kinds of projects that, uh, that we can fund. Um, and, and the, the programs are admissible in any discipline, artificial intelligence, uh, social sciences, housing, as we've seen before, it's very, very broad. So ultimately we, uh, we, we, you know, we, we think that we can help you build your innovation ecosystem. A lot of our partners uh, are startups where you can work with startups. It's very flexible uh, programs allow you to maybe to get a few different organizations working together to solve a common problem. We've seen this with municipalities and you know, of course private corporations. And um, again, the, the connections can be made with uh, just about any post-secondary post organization across Canada, universities and uh, colleges. And that. So that, that's the short introduction to, uh, to the program. I'm not to, the, to what my text is and who we are. And I think we'll just leave it at that for now. And uh, I think I'll pass, the, um, I'll pass the microphone to my colleague, Mel, who's gonna tell you a little bit more about the actual programs. And then we'll get a little bit more into the, the process because that's important too. And then we'll jump into a whole bunch of examples. And hopefully maybe during that phase, if you have any questions, we can sort of have a bit of it, more of a dynamic uh, exchange. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Jean-Philippe. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mel Char, and as I've been introduced earlier, I'm an account manager at uh, MyTax. I've been around uh, for four and a half years. I just want to say that JP, uh, although he's new, but he's been around uh, MyTax uh, before myself he's for many years. So he's uh, well versed about uh, why MyTax came about and uh, what do we do. And uh, since he uh, uh, rejoined, uh, we have uh, introduced uh, several different programs which i'm going to be uh, talking about uh, i want to jump in uh, directly to the slide that basically shows you the uh, map of where we fit so 
uh, MyTax, we keep saying that we can help you at all levels. And I just want to emphasize something that uh, passed earlier in, in the uh, uh, presentation regarding the uh, players that are actually in every project within MyTax. We have to have a, uh, a, an industry partner or a, an NFP. Uh, and we always have to have a university or a college, so an academic side, and then MyTax is the third player. And the way we actually put this together, and it could be at any of the levels in the life cycle of a product, uh, whether it's at the idea level, at the idea or the uh, uh, prototyping, or whether on the deployment and the enhancement of features, uh, I'd like to think that we could uh, offer one of the programs that I'm going to be presenting later on to help you in that segment or in the entire life cycle of the product. So uh, going to the next slide, uh, we have what we call an Accelerate uh, program. This is our uh, bread and butter and Accelerate is a uh, has been actually expanding uh, and taking on quite a bit of uh, um, I actually wanted to speak about a different slide. Maybe we go back to the previous one. Uh, okay, so uh, Accelerate uh, basically has been, as I said, expanding. And on the first uh, uh, top level, uh, the first square on top, it's Accelerate uh, Explore. This is where we could basically quickly put together a project where you can explore an idea that you have, whether or not uh, there is a professor working on it, but there is some research uh, that's available around Canada or maybe even internationally that you can tap into. And uh, we call this an Accelerate Explorer. Uh, the Accelerate program itself uh, could be expanded to be uh, investigating uh, a, an idea even deeper, which could potentially go for not just a small period of time, but for multiple of years. And this uh, has to be connected to research, and that research has to be connected to uh, essentially a publication that university can use, that professors can use, and that student that uh, basically can can use. Uh, the outcome of that research is going to be yours. It's going to be uh, bundled inside your project. It's going to be uh, uh, used by you. However, the research itself is going to uh, basically drive the uh, university professors and students to work on this uh, project. <clears throat> Going into the uh, business uh, strategy internship, which is uh, potentially could be uh, non-research, and this is where development comes in, and you can explore uh, production and deployment of uh, the idea that you have actually looked at before and then see how it fits into your product. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, going into the, uh, the next uh, presentation, oh, sorry, the next uh, slide. Okay, so um, how do we actually do Accelerate? Uh, so my tax actually, uh, we'll put in a little bit of, maybe JP, you can jump in here because I'm not actually. Losing your voice. Uh, apologies for that. I hope Mel's okay. Seems to have a uh, shot down la gorge. Um, so, so, you know, jumping right into the, the heart of what my tax does, we, uh, in the shortest version, we, we offer funding. We make connections and we offer funding. And the program that's been around for, for the longest time is called MyTax Accelerate. It's essentially a program that uh, co-funds uh, an internship with, um, in collaboration with uh, a, uh, a partner. So typically you have a company uh, working with a university on an innovation project of some sort, and uh, we will cover half the cost of the internship. So what we're seeing here on screen is the basic formula where a company, and there are a lot of, there, there, there's, there's been an increasing um, flexibility in, the, in what you can do with the program. So this is one of the versions 
and again going back to having a, a boots on the ground and people that you can work with uh, sometimes gets a little bit tedious and there's a lot of little details but this is one one version of the programs it's essentially a company would put in seven thousand five hundred dollars my tax would put in seven thousand five hundred dollars this goes into a budget of fifteen thousand dollars that goes to a university or a, a college and the um, the organization would then be given the opportunity to work on an, an innovation project of some sort with a professor and a graduate student or postdoc or a college student on a uh, on a project that is of uh, of a common interest. So that that's really the 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 basic formula. And I'd say when a lot of people think about what you can do with my tax, that's very much what they have in mind here. Uh, as we'll see later, this is a very flexible formula. It's possible to get access access to more of these uh, of these. Um, of, uh, of this funding in short, but um, that, that's the basic formula. So the, the, just going back to what you can do with this, the program is really designed to give you access to, to expertise and to manpower. That's the crux of the programs. So as you're seeing from the, on the bottom left here, the student or the intern that's gonna be working with uh, the partner organization needs to be paid a minimum of $10,000 per, per per internship unit, if you like, like to call it. There's a certain part of the, uh, of the grant that can go towards funding other stuff. Sometimes uh, you need to buy material or you need to pay for maybe a data set in some instances. So there's a flexible amount out of the $15,000 that can be used for other expenses, but that's, that's the, the, the basic formula. So the, the partner organizations is going back to that, right? Private company, nonprofit, uh, municipality puts in a bit of money we help you through the whole process in making this work but that's the uh that's the basic of the uh of, of the program and um so you know it's possible like i was saying with these with this to to go really small so the smallest we will fund is a one unit or one of those you know one of those uh one of those units of funding for a four-month project with one partner company, one prof, and one intern. It's possible to go much bigger. It's possible to have many of those four-month units, many, many partners, multi-year initiatives to uh, basically allowing, allowing organizations to undertake more complex projects for longer-term goals. Um, this has its advantages and, uh, and, and drawbacks. The advantage is that, um, well, you can secure funding in advance for a larger multi-year initiative that, um, that you know, might, might span a, a, a more complex initiative. We've seen, we've seen projects of uh, 250 internship units. So you can imagine that this typically would, you know, would happen with many partner organizations and very often with many universities and obviously with many students across many years, uh, those come at the cost of complexity. So there are, uh, you know, there are all kinds of little uh, complexities in the programs that, you know, may or may not justify such uh, large initiatives. But um, it's, I, I'd say just keep in mind, it's very flexible. I see that uh, Mel is back with us. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, continue. Uh, sorry, I actually got uh... A lot of windows opened and I couldn't see the screen, so I needed to jump off and then turn off certain things on my screen. I apologize for that, but I think you should continue. I'm answering the questions that we're getting on the chat. Okay, that's amazing. I'm not seeing those questions. That's pretty good. Um, so, <laughs> so, so as as we were saying, right? The the, the there's flexibility, and the, we're we're trying not to go into too much detail because then you know it gets uh, it gets a bit complex. It's not that complex. Ultimately, what it comes down to is the fact that you put in an organization puts in a certain amount of money. We put in, we double the, those the funding. Funding goes to the university. Um, if it's a larger project, and sometimes depending on the, the program that we end up using internally, the leverage might be slightly different. We might be able, able to offer a fifty-five percent uh, leverage rather than uh, than the fifty percent. Um, there are a few options, and Mel might be able to jump in here. I, I know that there's a there's a special initiative right now whereby the partner contribution is reduced to twenty five percent. And Mel, yeah, I'm not sure uh, if you had the, intended on covering that later, or uh, 
I don't believe so, but we do run some uh, uh, promotions, I would like to call them. And those promotions, sometimes they're targeting small and medium enterprises in Canada. And uh, what we do, instead of the 50% contribution, we reduce that to a quarter, actually. You pay 25% and we cover the 75%. The formula would remain the same. You know, the flexible funds between 10 and 20,000. Uh, and sometimes it may actually even go more than 20,000, as we can see when we go to the Elevate program. And we're still paying uh, for the small and medium enterprises the 75% portion versus the 25 for the uh, industry partner and the NFP. And the reason we're doing that is that to promote more interaction with the academia and promote uh, companies and NFPs to use MyTax to be able to build their competitive edge and uh, be competitive in the market, whether at the national level or at the international level. Very good. Uh, maybe moving along. Um... So this basically is a, is a summary of what we have started with. Uh, the entire innovation spectrum that we spec at the moment or that we actually look at is re-research, which is where we said uh, uh, we started with Accelerate Explore. Uh, at the research level, we use the Accelerate and the Elevate uh, programs. And uh, at the post-research, we use the, what we call the uh, Business Strategic uh, Innovation or BSI. Oh, sorry, you had those there. <laughs> Apologies. This one has animation, yes. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, in a nutshell, accelerate. You can you can run through the animation here, and what we see on top, we talk about the entrepreneur stream. Uh, uh, we have a special uh, accelerate for entrepreneurs that uh, uh, are trying to take advantage of building their own company. Uh, they can basically use accelerate, and uh, they will be able to fund themselves. Uh, as long as they have a connection to a university and a sponsorship for a PI or a private uh, primary investigator to help them with that. <clears throat> Next, please. Um, uh, the Elevate Award, I want to basically talk about the uh, uh, Elevate a little bit uh, in, in, a, in, a, in detail. Elevate is specific for postdocs. Uh, essentially, uh, we focus on these uh, awards for potentially creating what we would call a chief technology officer of your company or potentially uh, the, the uh, person that's going to be leading your research going forward. So Elevate is, is uh, primarily uh, focused on uh, postdocs. It's not available for any other level at the academic uh, uh, stage. So we have the regular uh, the regular Elevate, which is uh, what you see on the screen here. And this is a $60,000 a year uh, award, 30,000 paid by the uh, company or NFP and 30,000 paid by uh, MyTax. Unless, of course, we have those promotions for the SMEs where you could pay 25%. Now on the next page, I'd like to show the Elevate, which we have recently, uh, tried or piloted, and we found that there is a quite a bit of uh, uh, take up on it. And this is a thematic uh, call. And by the way, Elevate is not open all the time. We do have two calls a year, one at the beginning, one in the middle of the year. And we usually take about two to 300, depending on the funding that we get provincially and federally. And uh, this thematic uh, award specifically is actually uh, uh, at $80,000 a year. And uh, I'd like to add an additional thing on the Elevate. Elevate is also uh, a, a, an award that's well-rounded because we offer the candidate or the intern training. And we're not going to talk about it here, but MyTax has a training department that trains all of the graduates at universities, and they are actually trained for free. So uh, that award will include training as well. Next page, please. <clears throat> and finally, I want to talk about the BSI. Uh, the BSI is uh, similar to the Accelerate, but it doesn't have research. So essentially, it's mainly development or what we call innovation. And this can span from four months to multiple 
uh, of four months, similar to what uh, JP has uh, shown in the previous uh, in the previous slide. Uh, Mel, we have a couple of questions. Um, sure. Someone's asking about the Elevate workflow. Can you talk a little bit more about the Elevate awards? Um, you know, the SME and FP approaches, my tax, uh, and how they find a postdoc, or does the SME and FP need to find a suitable postdoc? So maybe a bit more about the process. So the, the uh, so the workflow is. Um, it's not just for the elevator to the SME and the way we engage, I think JP touched on it a little bit at the beginning, but I'll actually repeat this. When we engage with you, we sit down and have a discussion. Uh, what we would like to do is capture what you're trying to, re to, uh, to achieve. And to do that, we have a small form that we have on the website we can actually share with you for a request for a researcher or a request for innovation. And that, uh, is a three page, which basically translates to three paragraphs describing your company, describing what you're trying to uh, achieve and describing the discipline that you believe that you need. In those, we take this and then uh, through some discussion back and forth between us and, and your company and your expert uh, in your company or your NFP, we can nail down exactly what you're look for, looking for. And then we put it on our, you know, uh, uh, internal MyTax network, whereby we will uh, share that with all the university and colleges across Canada and basically knock on the door of every researcher that is interested to work on, you know, whether an Accelerate or whether an Elevate or a BSI. And then we'll come back to you with inquiries of those uh, that are interested so that you can meet with them and you can uh, find out if there is synergy between what you're trying to do and what they are actually researching. And if there is, then you can take the next step, which is building a, an application, whether it's an Accelerate application or a BSI application or an Accelerate Explore. All of that is done with the help of MyTax. We will basically be with you along all these steps just to basically find the right uh, intern and the right PI, and this is the emphasis of my tax is that we don't have a database whereby we are actually, you know, trying to recruit those students or those professors to the industry. What we do is dynamically trying to connect the two sides and making sure that there is synergy before they take any other step. So it's really comprehensive and it's really differentiated from all other offerings that you would see. Uh, in the market today, I hope Mel, I answered the, uh, the entire the entire. Uh, Mel, I was going to ask. So it's it's been a while, right? I've only been back at my test for a month and a half <laughs> now. Um, the, the elevate is still call based, right? And I believe there are two calls per year, so th there's that. To the elevate right is a call back. based. Yes, the elevate is a call, yeah. This is where is some sometimes maybe there there is a little bit of a you know uh, we we sort of. Uh, skim over it, but Elevate is a call base. Accelerate and BSI, they're open all the time. There's no call that we actually open or close. And you do have to factor in quite a few months of wait for Elevate to pan out, right? So I think by the time the call because opens, of, you've got a few months yeah. to submit an application, you submit the application, a few more months for approval to come. So typically you got to be what, like maybe six months in advance, three, four, five, six months in advance? I would say uh, I would say you have to definitely think about it uh, six months in advance at the, at the least. Yeah, Very because good. it's gonna uh, accelerate is go, is is gonna go through a review, which is a peer review, similar to any other uh, research. BSI is gonna go through a innovation re uh, a review. It's not a, a, a peer review, but it's an innovation. It's a lot faster. Yeah. However, elevate. Not only that you have to go through a peer review, you have to also compete against other uh, applicants and you have to wait for the calls when they open and they close. So the, uh, the planning for the Elevate is a little bit more, uh, uh, I guess, long term, I should say. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm not sure if we're going to touch on success rates at my task, just but touching on that quickly regarding Elevate. Uh, the, the program is very, I'd say very, or my tax is very flexible. We really try hard to make things work for applicants and the success rate is very high. And what we'll see is that if an Elevate application is deemed uh, 
is not being sufficiently strong for the Elevate program, then there are quite a few chances that it will be, be, be deemed strong enough for Accelerate. So the, the leverage yeah. might not be quite as quite as good or it might be slightly different, but we might, you know, you might get an opportunity to be funded through the Accelerate program, which is very, very close at its core. Oh, definitely. I think uh, the fact that we have that sort of uh, fallback uh, position actually gives us uh, a really great uh, uh, option for, for a lot of the companies and NFPs out there. Yeah, to talking about NFPs, there was one more question uh, in, in the chat about um, how many how many nonprofit statistics regarding nonprofits versus private companies, and uh, someone ran a, a search in our in our projects box with the, the word nonprofit, and uh, yeah, you probably won't find too many that way, but I don't know the stats right now, but I I'd say it's very it's pretty high. I don't I don't have any percentages, but it's certainly way higher than five uh, projects with nonprofits. Yeah, I, I actually sent the link out and uh, thank you for looking at the link quickly. Uh, but uh, whatever you see on that uh, website is not everything we've done. And simply because sometimes the applicant would request not to put anything public. So uh, those for 15,000 or 17,000 that we have out there, uh, they're not everything. And sometimes the search may not be, the, you know, uh, well, uh set up so <laughs> i would say i can definitely tell you that i personally have done this uh in the last four years at my tax i've done over 20 nfps and uh we are by the way uh 115 people like myself and jp uh about 25 are facing industry and nfp and the rest are facing and working with the academia and this is what makes my tax a bit different than the rest is that we are dedicated to making sure that those channels between industry, NFPs, and academia is well uh, traveled, is uh, safe, it's fast, it's quick, mm -hmm. it's, uh, no, <laughs> give us a try. Very good. So since uh, time is uh, time is running out, uh, I want to bore you with some of this stuff because we we just we talked about it quite a bit. But it's the, the MyTax approach and you know how we can work with you. And again, going back to what we do, uh, we offer funding at the core. MyTax offers funding, but I think probably maybe the biggest value is that we can work with you. We can help you, you know, understand the programs and for a lot of organizations, understand what it's going to mean to work with a university or a college. So, and we'll sit down with you, we'll ask you what your challenge is, and we will try to you know, help you make this connection. And we will try to outline and explain what the benefits might be for a lot of organizations that aren't quite clear on that, such as perhaps you know, one of the big ones is, aside from solving complex projects, having access to talented individuals. So uh, I think there's one more of these right here regarding the whole, you know, the the, the roadmap. And, and as Mel is explaining, you know, we'll sit down with you. You can fill a form. We'll go and search for candidates for you. So we, we really try hard to make that happen. And, um, and I, you know, I think that's a, a huge part of the value. We have agents that are based in universities pretty much all across the country. So out of the 115 that we are, many are, uh, are directly dedicated to specific universities, certainly all of the larger ones. And when a, uh, when a, a project proposal comes to us, then we, you know, we, we spread, we, we, uh, we distribute the offer in our universities and it becomes a bit of a challenge for you know, all of these, these agents to try and find a professor and a student that might be interested in working with you. So that's certainly a, a big value to, to what we do. So maybe without, unless Mel, you had something else to add here, I was gonna, I was gonna jump into examples because I think we're running, uh, running low on time. Uh, no, except I'm gonna be putting some links in the, uh, uh, in the discussion. Uh, and uh, you can look at all the new programs that we are doing also with indigenous. We don't have time to go through them uh, in yeah. this session, but we're, we have a lot more new programs that are coming down the pipe, which basically centered around the not-for-profit municipalities, indigenous. So I'll ah. put some good things. Very good. very good on the indigenous one. I'm very glad to hear that one. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good things happening at my tax. So I've got about 10, 15 examples here and I might just run through them quickly. Apologies, these are not examples. These are not projects that I was a part of specifically, but I did, uh, I did try and look for projects that had 
open data, data governments, um, you know, policy questions. And there's a couple in here that are more into um, you know, data crunching kinds of projects. And just a bit of, a bit of background, I, used, I, I worked in IT for a long time and I, I made the switch to business development uh, uh, a number of years ago, but uh, I do have a sense for, uh, for, for these things and for, for what it means to uh, to manipulate data and the kinds of uh, the kinds of challenges that uh, that one can be faced with. So, uh, but in, I, I do have a bit of a yeah, understanding there. So this one, so this first project, and all of these, you will find them on the link that uh, that Mel provided, the, the MITAX uh, past projects page. So I did exactly the same thing that uh, some of you did today. I went there and I you know I ran a search for. Uh, for for some key you know, keywords and um, and found qu quite a few interesting ones. This one is uh, open data guidelines and policy. Let me just move something aside here. Uh, I thought this one was uh, probably a good example of um, the District of Squamish. I'm not quite sure they're based in BC, so why they were working with Concordia University in Montreal, I'm not quite sure. But it just shows that uh, all these things are, are possible, and they were essentially trying to define the district's uh, open data program and you know making decisions based on the, on you know better understanding of of those issues. So definitely the a kind of project that. Uh, that would be uh, admissible and that can be funded by my tax. This one is super interesting too. Uh, the, um, the city of Winnipeg made their 311 data uh, available through a, an open portal. And this project consists in essentially trying to find out if it's, you know, if we can, if we can do more, if we can do better, if we can help the city be better understand the calls that are coming through and uh, allow the city to improve, uh, you know, the, their services to, um, to essentially, uh, you know, find characteristics about uh, about the callers and the kinds of requests they're making, and this uh, very exciting. Um, this one is the with the Canadian Tax Foundation. Uh, can't quite specifically remember. Assemble data on public finance of governments and data to make them more useful for policy analysis. So again, very much in line with uh, the the topic today. Um, this one towards a more accessible Canada, yeah, accessibility data is, you know, do we have, you know, do, you know, to, to collect, collect and, you know, compile better information about uh, accessibility that will ultimately benefit the Canadian community that, you know, could gain a, uh, uh, a better understanding of where uh, accessible businesses uh, are in their communities. So, uh, cool project. Uh, this one, oh, this is COVID related project. So yeah, I, I, this must have been very useful. I think we heard about quite a few of those when uh, COVID first hit, um, essentially trying to make sense of what the numbers are regionally speaking, uh, regionally uh, uh, located. And uh, I think they also uh, had a, uh, an objective of tying those, the, the COVID information with um, GPS data. So, um, Helping you know make more informed uh, policy decisions. Uh, big data. So this oh the, this one was a, a bit more IT related, um, not so much uh, open data per se, but uh, essentially a, a project with McGill University to to tackle the fact that it's difficult to process big data. So I'm not quite sure what this specific uh, project was uh, was really looking into, but they were trying to find better ways. To, uh, to make big data uh, available. Um, ICT Urban Informatics, uh, this was with IBM. Um, I think they were trying to, to design a, a visualization tool for Toronto's waterfront area by collecting data from uh, various resources and other data that might be generated on the fly. So some of these, sometimes you wonder, right, is it, is it research or is it really innovation? It's a. Uh, that's why you know we're 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 always super happy to, to to sit down with you and try and get an understanding of 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 you know whether or not we feel that the project would be admissible to the my tax funding. So uh, the programs are. It's possible to to submit a proposal without going through anyone at my tax, but that's really not the the usual way that things are done. You usually will want to give a call to your uh, your your local advisor and try and figure these questions out. Uh, this one was about uh, data preparation, right? So I think there's um, 
um, there's a concern that AI might be only available to a certain very specific number of uh, you know, individuals, or organizations, and there's a, a need to democratize AI. So th this project consists in developing innovative technologies to uh, essentially make, uh, uh, you know, to simplify data preparation for, for AI. Uh, this one, we've seen a few of these real-time flood forecast using, uh, you know, cloud computing and uh, using, uh, this one is using Environment Canada's open weather forecast uh, to, uh, to come up with, uh, you know, smart recommendations here. Um, finally, I just got a few more of these. Uh, development and infrastructure for uh, air technology. Uh, ah, let me just get through this one. I've got a, I've got a cool one coming up. Oh, this one, this one's interesting, right? Data exchange. So I think uh, maybe this will resonate with uh, quite a few of you, right? Um, there's uh, more and more governments are sharing data, thread data, and there's just more and more of this data. And I think there's a concern that you, it, some of it might be missed, so or some of it might be redundant. So this project consists in trying to prevent those challenges from being too big and simplifying the challenge and extracting thread information from, uh, from high throughput traffic data. And um, <clears throat> another similar here. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. This one, this one I thought was fun. Anybody who's, uh, who's dealt on the markets uh, might be interested. This one was about looking at uh, open market data to try and to try and get an understanding of where the markets are going and, you know, by finding hidden correlations and casualty between price movement of uh, global markets. So I thought this one was, uh, was fun, interesting uh, use of open data sets. And uh, we have another one here from the IBM Toronto lab of uh, trying to, you know, get an understanding of uh, the, the kinds of data exchanges that can occur between uh, web services. So, uh, was an exciting one. And finally, this last one uh, just was, brought, was brought to my attention yesterday by a colleague. Uh, this one is about designing a, uh, an application to prevent beach drownings. And for this project, they, they installed all kinds of sensors um, to uh, essentially get a feeling of how the waves are moving and the traffic of uh, pedestrians. And uh, so it also deals with anonymizing faces and ultimately coming up with a recommendation so that uh, there are fewer drownings. So uh, kind of fun project. So, so ultimately that's, that's, I think that's about it for uh, our presentation today. Mel, if you want to jump in, Paul, uh, uh, we can certainly look into uh, questions from, uh, from people out there, but that's, that if pretty I may, much covers Paul, the programs. Yeah, if I may, just uh, one, one additional uh, comment here. We, uh, we sure. shared some links, and one of those links is on the searches, or two of them actually, mm -hmm. one on the impact uh, uh, stories. And I recommend that you look for a small, uh, where it says either more or, or expand the search so that you can get more filtration. Ah. There is over 1,200 impact stories other than the projects that are completed, and those are a bit more detailed on projects that we worked on and we brought in the partner to discuss what what was the impact to their uh, to their uh, research their work that's great I, I can capture the chat log from this and i will be including it with the uh, with the youtube presentation and uh, before i open the floor to questions i just want to say that for all our municipal members and partners and the municipal members of uh, go open data the ontario version of our organization with whom we work closely uh, i think we're going to be very proactive in sending this information uh to them and inviting them to get in touch with you because uh, i mean having worked in a municipality myself it just such trouble to get a new hire on and mm -hmm. especially these days with the skilled labor shortage it's it's um, having the bandwidth to get the bandwidth it's it's catch-22 in a way and and if if this could help with that help groom the talent of the future that they need then i, I think we could all work very effectively together and get them off to the races because we are so far behind the possibilities. Uh, maybe we're not far behind other people, but we're far behind the possibilities when it comes to just municipal dashboards or smart cities or some of these projects that you mentioned, which I think will really, really resonate with uh, our municipal uh, friends. So uh, if, if anyone has any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, put up their hand or uh, go to the chat. Uh, Tim, I think I see your face there. Okay. Hey, yes. Hello. Um, 
very Saturday dressed. Everyone's wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um okay uh so yeah i actually have got a my tax uh we just got a my tax accelerate grant so i'm a wanted to say thank you um Great. took advantage of the 25 percent we're a, a startup so that difference of four thousand is actually very very welcome um yeah so i wanted to ask whether there's a kind of potential for a three-way oh yeah collaboration in that we have a product that we think could be really useful for municipalities trying to do open data. Um, and it needs some dev and it needs some structure and it could really use like uh, an institutional partner to help us get that. But I was wondering if you it would be possible for MyTax to sort of help bring that together. The, the product is around detecting and auditing data associated with documents. So, uh, uh, an organ a municipality puts out a report saying that they need more roundabouts on a particular road and the document is stamped as an open data report and then as you're reading it you can see the data sets that underline the key points that they are making like we did we monitored traffic on this road for two weeks and you're like okay I want to see that and then you click you go through and you actually see the data set that they collected um, and people have shown that people tend to take much more faith in documents that have the data sets underlying them. So we see this as something potentially that municipalities and other organizations like that are be really interested in. But we don't know that yet because we haven't really got in front of a municipality to say, is this something you want? Well, why don't we actually uh, uh, can, you know, connect between either JP or myself and uh, we'll take this uh, sort of offline and discuss the detail, but I, I definitely, uh, I want to tell you that we can have more than one partner on the application. There's no problem with that. And I think that for municipalities, this is a great way. And I think they're all they're all going to be faced with similar challenges, right? There's an exciting technology out there that they may or may not know about, but there's a uh, some uncertainty with, with regards to how useful it might be for them, and be might be a need to run a, a pilot a pilot project of some sort, right? So there's That's certainly important. a possibility for. A lot of uh, a, a lot of different ways that this could be run. You can share the costs of the you know, of the partner organization with the, with the municipality. Uh, the intern can spend a bit of time with you, a bit with the municipality. So that might might turn out to be actually a way for the municipality to um, to sort of integrate the knowledge internally and to have someone that ultimately might become a municipality employee. So yeah, very good potential there. Roshnish has a question. Yeah, um, I'm in my Saturday garb too. Yeah, Hello. Um, so my question was, um, the database of projects, is it published somewhere as open data since it's open data day after all? I don't think it is, unfortunately. We um, so this this does require a lot of, uh, as you know, right, a lot of time and effort to make the data available in that in that fashion. Um, so uh, I don't believe that there's any current project to do that. And I gotta say, we're also faced with uh, confidentiality concerns in some respect. So this is interesting, right? Because I think it brings about an interesting question. Some data uh, is meant to be accessible and open, but when you make it accessible through an, an electronic portal where anybody can just crunch large amounts of data, it brings a, maybe a different uh, set of considerations, but I guess that's it's a secondary question. But uh, the answer to your question is no, there's no web service or uh, there's no way to download the whole, the whole database in a CSV or format of any kind. Okay. Um... I see no other questions uh, on the chat. Um, I'm going to go ahead with a question, if that's okay. Yes. A couple of questions, actually. Uh, I was busily writing them down and then crossing them out as you answered them. <laughs> um, have you ever had any instance of uh, being involved with a project where they got major funding from, say, a provincial or federal government or somewhere else, uh, and uh, and they wanted to just sort of tack on uh, internship funding from my tax in yes. a sort of a stacking manner is hopefully that's not a dirty word yes yes it's a it's all good good reflex though <laughs> i think we're always very very sensitive there but actually there are two things that i can certainly confirm to you because i've seen the project recently and maybe mel can chime in with also some information there but i i've seen a project with the university of toronto 
the five municipalities and two nonprofits working together on wow. a substantially large project that was co-funded by NSERC. Anybody oh. on the call? Not knowing, so that's the right Canadian National Sciences and Engineering Research Council. So right. it's uh, so it's possible to essentially get one industry nonprofit municipality dollar and to get one my tax dollar and to get one NSERC dollar. So that's wow. that's possible right now. Might not always be possible in the future because yeah. I know that those rules tend to tend to change and evolve. Yeah. But right now it's possible. And the other scenario I've seen just very recently is we're talking with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities running the Green Municipal Fund that wow. many of your members will know about. And yeah. I believe that it's possible for a municipality to we're working on this right now to assess how compatible those you know that that sort of co-funding possibility might be but right now it's looking like in in some ways this would be possible as well so i'm hesitant to you know to be more convinced or convincing here with this but Fair i enough. believe that yeah that that's possible as well to some extent okay and and then just one last question we're right at 4 30 this is great um I tend to think of open data solutions as as often being synthesized from various off the shelf elements like uh, like the techniques will be uh, adopted from this place and the governance from that place and maybe even the technology used to collect the open data from a new technology startup or whatever so. Uh, I, you mentioned that the definition of innovation in this context is, is fairly broad and you would end up with a somewhat unique solution because each municipality has different demands from its constituents. Right. Um, but, you know, if, if they grew over time to not necessarily resemble one another, but certainly take a lot of learning from one another, uh, that wouldn't necessarily impair the possibility of, of a tie up with uh, with my tax, would it? Mel, do you see? I. I don't. I, I don't. Off the top of my head, uh, Paul, I don't think so. Uh, again, we take it case by case, and as uh, JP says, it depends on uh, what's available at the time of of the discussion that we're having. Because we live in a in a world where budget will change, rules will change. You know, uh, we did not basically serve municipalities before the pandemic, mm -hmm. and now with the pandemic, they found that there is actually a big need. So we sort of looked into it and said well maybe we should investigate and do some pilots and then we did that and eventually the you know the the uptake was was strong so now we're taking this as a you know to the mainstream so i would say again it, it has to be today i don't see a problem but again okay. we'll it case by case definitely but, but also just going back to the very basic things that we can do the accelerate and the elevate the traditional programs that my tax are meant to support as much as possible, something that can be defined as research that needs to be novel, where there needs to be a scientific uncertainty or the answer really isn't obvious and isn't available here today. And that's, that's the criteria by which those <laughs> projects are evaluated. The new one that we came up a year and a half, two years ago, the, the strategic entrepreneurship program, uh, the, the, the business strategy internship program, this one's quite a bit broader. And as long as the organization who's hoping to undertake the project, uh, you know, undertakes something that's new for them, that's mm -hmm. going to make them better, that's going to allow mm -hmm. them to innovate and do something that's going to allow them to be more productive, to develop, to do something, you know, something new for them. Is admissible, but again, those rules tend, tend, even those tend to change a little bit. But right now, those uh, those are the rules. So I'd say not really an issue if many municipalities try and develop and innovate in roughly the same way. Although I'd say for those, maybe we'd like for them to work together on developing something that then they can share with everyone else. Ah, oh, fair point. Absolutely right. Okay, and maybe we can help them with that. Um, okay, uh, if anyone has any other questions, uh, now is the time, or uh, I will bring uh, the proceedings to a close. Uh, and if you could stop share, I will share mine Oops. Uh, and uh, bring us back to the society. And yeah, this is our sort of our final screen where we talk about joining the society. It's uh, five bucks a month for individual members. Um, and uh, $50 a month for municipalities and uh, 
and small organizations. Uh, we have a break for nonprofits and social enterprises as well. And uh, we are increasingly offering value and uh, as much as possible in both official languages. So uh, that's my uh, little elevator pitch for uh, membership in the society that I always try to give. Thank you both very much for coming today. Uh, I think we had a really tight uh, audience that was deeply engaged. And I know for a fact that I'm gonna be taking all of these proceedings and I'm gonna be sharing them with all of our municipal friends, uh, including through our membership, our board of directors, Go Open Data. I think everyone needs to, uh, to know about this um, as soon as possible, because I, I think the time is ripe. You know? uh, people are increasingly focused on doing more with less. That's the name of the game productivity-wise, right? Um, so, uh, I guess that's that's about it. Thank you very much, and uh, I will be in touch with uh, with uh, with everybody. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thanks you for the invitation. It was really good to be here. And yeah, we didn't get a chance to give our, our contact info on that last slide there, but we will certainly be sharing all of this information with you and your members. Yes, I will pass that along directly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. Merci beaucoup. Thanks, everyone. Salut. Bye. Goodbye.